Amy, how are you? What are you doing right now? Hurry up and answer my messages. I know you're not busy. I bet you're just lying around, doing nothing. Helen, hi, I'm fine. I hope you're well too. I'm sorry that I couldn't get to the phone quicker. I was driving. I need to prepare dinner when I get home, so I'm just out and doing grocery shopping. What about your son? Is he with you? Your parents were kind enough to offer to watch over him. They're at home right now. Will loves his grandparents, so it's good for them to have some quality time together. I knew it. Don't give me that excuse. You don't think it's quality time for them. You're just being lazy. I don't understand what you're trying to say. You're making my mom take care of your son, aren't you? Because you can't be bothered to take care of him yourself, right? I bet you just moved in with my parents because you knew they'd offer to watch him and wanted to take advantage of their kindness. That wasn't the reason why we decided to move into your parents' house, but it's true that they've been really supportive. It's thanks to them that I can go on my part-time job without worrying about Will. I'm really grateful for their help. Good for you. You've only got one kid, but you've got all the help you can get. You can leave him with your husband's parents and do whatever you like. Usually people only ask grandparents for help when they really need it. Considering their age, but you think you can use them as much as you like because you're so important. How arrogant can you get? I don't know where you got that idea, but that's not true. I'm not doing whatever I like, and I'm only relying on him because your brother has to go on long-term business trips for work. David's the one who first suggested we move in with your parents because he's away so much. I'm doing as many of the chores as I can when I'm at home, and of course I wish I could be at home all the time so I don't have to ask them to watch Will. But, I don't want to be completely reliant on him for money either, so I want to earn some money so I can cover some of the bills myself. Oh, come on, you're not as good a liar as you think you are, Amy. I know that you don't actually think any of that. You just want a part-time job so that my parents will think that you're working hard. You just want to take advantage of them. Can't believe that you'd think I was using them. I really am just doing what I think is right. I have three children, you know, and they want to see their grandparents too. But because you're living with my parents, I can't visit. Do you know how long it's been since they last all saw each other? My parents haven't even met my youngest. Do you understand? It's all your fault. You're getting in the way of my children's quality time with my parents. You're splitting up a family because you can't be bothered to take care of one kid. I think it's amazing that you're able to take care of three children. I don't know how you do it without the help. You could come visit whenever you like, but the reason why you can't come to stay is because your second son is allergic to your parents' dog, isn't he? That's not the problem. Were you even listening to me? Why do you always have to interrupt me with the most irrelevant comments? Anyway, back to the conversation. I'm going to move in with my parents. I want you out, right now. Excuse me, I'm sorry. This is all so sudden, I can't keep up. What are you talking about? Why do I have to move out? What's so hard to understand? I'm telling you to leave. Is it so bad for me to want to live with my own parents? I'm not saying it's bad, I just don't understand. You're saying that you want to move in with your parents? And live with them in the same house? Of course that's what I mean. What else could move in mean? Are you an idiot? Why do I have to explain such a simple sentence? I'm moving in, capiche? I'm sorry, I was just surprised. Do you mean that you'll be moving in with your family? Your kids too? What will you do about Ricky's dog allergy? That's right. Do you really think I'd leave my children behind? You don't have to worry about that. I'll get my parents to give the dog away. It's as simple as that. My children are more important. But your parents love the dog. I think they'd be really sad to part ways. Does your husband agree with all of this? Won't it be tougher for him to get to work if he lives farther away from his office? My husband will be fine. It's none of your business, but he won't be living with us. He'll be living by himself. Okay, do you mean that he'll be going away on business? Like David? Like I said. It got nothing to do with you. You really are so nosy. Why can't you just shut up and accept what I've decided?
You're right. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have asked. My curiosity got the better of me. But if you're going to move in, then have you already spoken to your parents? I haven't heard anything from them about any of this, so I was wondering if it might have slipped their minds to mention it. Or maybe you hadn't spoken to them about it yet. I'll tell them when I feel like it. It's not like they need a warning or anything. They're my parents, not yours. They'll be delighted to hear that I'm coming home. And I'm the eldest daughter, it's my job to take care of my parents. They'll feel much more at ease with me taking care of them rather than a complete stranger. That way they can see their favorite grandchildren too. So, I'm asking you to leave. You're just in the way. I'm sorry, what? You haven't told them anything yet? I don't have to. All I have to do is make sure you and your staff are out of my parents' house, so that I can move in. We can't all live in there together, it'll be too cramped. I'm their daughter, and have three children, so I take precedence. You may have married my brother, but that doesn't make you more important than me. I move in, and you and your son move out. Simple as that. Even if you say that, it's not something that can be done straight away, or even in a few days. If that's what you were planning, then you should have mentioned something, or given me a warning, or at least asked for your family's opinion. Have you spoken to David? Of course I haven't. Don't you know where your own husband is? He's on the other side of the world. How am I supposed to get in touch with him without losing sleep? Do you really want me to bother him with something so trivial while he's working? And you call yourself his wife? Why can't you just accept what I've told you to do? You can tell David when he gets home from his business trip. I understand that you don't want to bother him, but if you haven't spoken to David or your own parents, how did you decide all of this? You can't just decide by yourself, that's way too self-centered. Of course I decided by myself. My mom and dad have no reason to say no to me, they love me the most. I may be an adult, but I still have them wrapped around my little finger. If they hear that they'll get to live with me and the grandchildren, they'll be overjoyed. That's why I should be the one living with them, not you. Do you understand or was that too difficult for you as well? That might be true, but you can't honestly think that you can decide that behind all of our backs. You may not realize it, but you're causing a lot of trouble for my mom by making her take care of your son. He's only turned one recently, right? Do you know how hard it is for someone my mom's age to watch a kid that young? I can't just stand by and watch as you take advantage of my mom. You're right, I've caused her a lot of trouble, and I'm really grateful for all the time she's dealt with Will's tantrums and hyperactiveness while have been at work. But you can't decide this without her opinion. Besides, your youngest is still only six months old, isn't she? I think that would be more of a burden. Oh shut up, you think you're better than me, but you're not. Unlike someone, I actually stay at home and take care of my own kids, rather than go out to work and waste my time. I won't ask my mom to babysit. I take pride in taking care of my kids myself. Neither one of us is better than the other. I respect you for being a stay-at-home mom with three kids. I happen to go out to work a part-time job, but why does that mean that I'm wasting my time? We're each doing what we think we should do in our own situations. Isn't that enough? Either way, I can't up and leave so easily. Why not? Because, where am I supposed to go? How am I supposed to move all of mine and David's stuff without any help from David? Maybe I could move out after David comes back but I can't find a place at such short notice, and I can't accept a decision you made without consulting any of us. You could leave David's things. He's family, after all. We'll store his things carefully until he comes back. You just have to take your stuff, your son and get out. You're being unreasonable. Why do I have to move out right now? Because I can't forgive people like you, who try to take advantage of my parents' kindness. Just because they offered a babysit doesn't mean you can use them like they're a daycare service. I never liked you, even before you married David, but I thought that I should respect his choice of partner. Now I know that I should have made more of an argument against you when I had the chance. That laid-back attitude of yours really pisses me off. I'm sorry, our conversation wasn't going anywhere, so I asked if anyone knew why you'd suddenly start acting like this, and your husband told me what's going on. 
I heard that you're going to get divorced. That's why you're so desperate to kick me out, isn't it? What? What are you talking about? Why would you talk to my husband behind my back? When I asked your mom, she told me she hadn't heard anything about you planning to move in, and confirmed that she hadn't agreed to anything like that. She didn't understand why you were being so aggressive towards me. She hadn't seen you in person for a while, and was worried about you. So she called your husband to ask about you. He told her about the divorce, and a lot of other things. My mom did. Seriously. She called my husband. What else did she hear? She found out that your husband went to stay with his parents until the divorce is over. He told us that he had asked you to move out as soon as possible because he can't keep on going to work from his parents' house and because he doesn't want to see you anymore. That's why you suddenly decided that you wanted to move in with your parents. But didn't tell them anything because you wanted to avoid telling them why you're getting a divorce. Yeah, so what? It's private. It's none of your business. I don't have to explain myself to you. All you have to do is hurry up and leave so that I can move in. You want to move in because you have nowhere else to go. All that talk about not trusting me, and not being able to forgive me for using your parents was all just an excuse to cover up your own mistakes. You don't even know what condition your parents are in. What? What are you talking about? What do you mean? My parents' condition. They're fine. Your dad isn't as fine as you think. I'm the one that's currently taking care of him. Ha, huh, taking care of him. Why are you acting like that's such a special thing? Of course you should be taking care of him. Don't be lazy. It's a lot more serious than that. I mean that, ever since he collapsed last year, he's needed more support doing day-to-day -day tasks. It seems like you were just satisfied that he was still alive, so you never came to see how he was doing. You don't know it, but he's been really frail. That's the main reason why David and I decided that we should move in with your parents. Because it would be too difficult for your mom to take care of him by herself, and it would be easier on us if we were in the same house rather than going to visit several times a week. I didn't know that he needed care. What, does he need help going to the toilet? Why didn't you tell me that sooner? I would have told you, but you never asked. You didn't seem to care about your parents' needs, since you always only contacted them when you needed something. And whenever your mom calls, you always let it go to voicemail. You may not know this, but she always is so disappointed that she can never even hear your voice. Sometimes I just can't get to the phone. What's so bad about that? Give me a break. Like when? When you're having an affair, for example. I can imagine that would be really awkward for you to answer the phone when you're busy with a guy that isn't your husband. What? I'm not having an affair. Did my husband say that I was having an affair? Because he's lying. You cheated, and got pregnant. And then Haley was born. Your youngest daughter's dad is the man you're having an affair with. Of course not. But that's the reason why you're getting divorced, right? He already told us that he filed for a fault divorce because he didn't want to have to suffer the whole separation period, which means that your husband already has evidence. Like a DNA test. There's no point trying to pretend you didn't do anything wrong. Your mom didn't know of course, and was apologizing to your husband. She didn't think that you were selfish enough to break up your own family, but that's exactly what you've done. Your husband was surprised that your parents didn't know anything too. You're so annoying, but just like you said, there's no point pretending it never happened if you know the truth. Will you lend me some money? What? Where did that come from? You've got a part-time job, right? So you must have some money to spare. I need to borrow some. I can't pay off the damages to my husband by myself. He demanded a lot, even though he knows I haven't been working since we married. Oh, and I'm planning to move into my parents' house at the end of the month, so I'll give you until then to get rid of your stuff. I'd be grateful if you prepared some money for me to borrow then too. What are you talking about? Do you really think I'll do anything for you now I know why you're asking for all of this? Plus, your mom is saying that she won't let you kick us out. Especially since I'm clearly more willing to be your dad's caregiver. Maybe you should just find a job, and rent your own apartment, instead of assuming that everyone around you will clean up after you. But I don't want to. Do you expect me to get a job in a supermarket or something? That's so embarrassing, and it'll be hard to find an apartment that's suitable for kids. Your husband was saying that he would take custody of the children. He's already taken the older two with him to his parents, hasn't he? 
you might as well just let him take Haley too, since he's offering. He has the means to raise them, you don't. You need to do something about that first. If I give up all my children, I won't be able to demand that he pay child support. I can't do anything without that. He makes a lot of money, so I can demand as much as I want. Are you being serious? Is that the only reason why you want to take your kids back? Because you won't be able to receive child support without them. You want to use your children to get money? What kind of mother are you? Anyway, I've just spoken to David. He agrees with me that we shouldn't support you financially. You need to get a job and work for it yourself. If you really love your children, you'd understand that that's what's best for them too, now that you're divorced. Besides, we don't have money to spare. We're saving so that we can get my license as a caregiver. That way I can get benefits for taking care of your dad, and I won't have to go to work. I can support him full time. I imagine that's impossible for you, so give up on moving in with your parents. Then what am I supposed to do? I won't have anywhere to go. Why don't you ask your paramour? He has a family too. I can't ask him for money. Are you an idiot? Clearly you're the idiot, since you've been asking me for money and more this entire conversation. Anyway, we're not going to support you at all. You've just got to sort things out yourself. If you really want to live with your parents, and really do want to kick us out, you should consider that if you do that, you'll have to take care of your dad, 24-7. He needs a lot of care, and you'll need a lot of resolve. I can't do that. Your mom was doing her best all by herself until we moved in, but it was becoming a strain on her, and that's why I've taken over most of the responsibilities. It's easier on her to take care of a one-year-old that only weighs a few kilos rather than a grown man. So, yeah, I don't think you can either. But you're the one that said the eldest daughter should take care of her own parents, remember? You should just call a professional to do that. Then can you provide the money for that service? No, I can't, but... Then stop being so irresponsible. Fine, I won't try and kick you out, so just lend me some money. That's all I ask, I'll pay you back, I swear, you can trust me. I need to pay my husband, or he'll take all of my children from me. You understand, don't you? You're a mother too, how would you feel if you were about to lose your children? I can't give them up. I don't understand at all. I don't understand the feelings of someone who prioritizes their affair over their own children. Your husband told us that you left your children unattended while you went out to meet with your lover. And you only want your children back because you want child support so you don't have to work. I don't want to understand how your brain works, at all. If you won't take care of your dad, or even try, and you don't have the money to pay for a professional, then you should try taking care of yourself first, and get a job. Maybe if you show that you're willing to pay, your husband will let you pay installments instead. You'll learn more about being a decent human being if you learn that there are consequences to your actions. What do I do about my children? What about the child support? You're still going on about the child support? If that's all you can think about, you've got a long way to go. And I suggest that if you care at all for your children, you'll let your husband take custody. They deserve that much at least. If someone is irresponsible as you raises them, I hate to imagine what kind of people they'll grow into. Anyways, do your best. Good luck with your job search. I hope you're happy. Later. Helen finally gave up on trying to force Amy out of her parents' house, but she hadn't learned her lesson, and called her mother to try and convince her to help her. Of course, her mother wasn't interested in hearing her excuses, and only told her what Amy had been messaging her all this time. Helen was told that she couldn't depend on her parents to save her because she was a grown woman, and needed to fix her own mess. Her mother even went so far as to tell her to never come home. It looks like Helen's own parents had gotten sick of her taking advantage of their love for her, and warned her to never expect him to lend her money or run errands for her ever again. In the end, her two older children were taken by her husband, and she couldn't demand that he paid child support, since her youngest daughter wasn't actually his. Her lover wouldn't acknowledge that Haley was his daughter either because he had a family, so nobody was obliged to pay child support. Haley was stuck with Helen as her mother, so Amy decided that she would sometimes visit him to see if Helen was actually working, and doing her best to raise her daughter. Ellen seems to have finally accepted her fate, and is working day and night to pay her husband his settlement, and to raise Haley.